Yep, we're out of cookies, but there's plenty of fish to catch. On this week in fishing, we're going to be talking about high mountain trout, kokanee salmon, bay halibut, ocean salmon, delta stripers, delta sturgeon. We're going to be talking about a massive brown trout and how you can catch one of your own. And our destination is French Meadows Reservoir. Hang on, here we go. It's time for this week in fishing. <music> I can hardly believe it, we're already into the month of June, the year is half over, but this prolonged spring we've had this year has made for some really great fishing all around Northern California. Um, there's too many places to talk about in reality, I mean I could go on for a couple hours probably. But uh, here are my hot bites for the week. I'm up here in the high Sierras, I'm at French Meadows Reservoir, trolling a pair of speedy shiners. I've caught one nice rainbow, I've hooked a couple others and lost them, you know, long distance releases. So this is going off up here, the water's 48 degrees, so really the fishing is just getting started at high mountain lakes like this. It's just getting into the fish's uh, comfort zone, they're, they're looking to feed, um, they're pretty aggressive and they're all up near the surface. So that brings us to our hottest bite. Our hottest bite is up at Lake El Menor once again red hot rainbow trout fishing um, trollers are banging them with spoons captain brian ricucci of big daddy's guide service continues to catch really nice rainbows they average you know about three pounds they range all the way up to six and seven pounds and all he's doing is he's looking for areas of bug activity on the surface and then he's power trolling those areas with hardware a variety of different kinds of spoons and it's working real well you do have to put in a little bit of time at Elmanor. You always do. Elmanor is never easy, but the fish there grow very large, and uh, it's really rewarding when you catch a big five-plus pound rainbow. Take it from me. Um, right next door up at Eagle Lake, um, sometimes Eagle starts off slowly. Sometimes it starts off hot. This year it's starting off hot. Guys are getting limits of fish in the two to three pound range. I heard about one four pounder already. Um, you can troll orange spoons, orange uh, speedy shiners, stuff like that, orange rapalas, and catch a limit. The slow stuff's also working. Your arctic fox flies, your jay fair flies, grubs, threaded worms, all that stuff's working. The guys that like to soak worms under bobbers, well, they're catching a few fish, but the guys that are trolling are doing a whole lot better. Um, probably because they're just covering more water, they're getting their offering in front of more fish. I'm kind of moving west, Shasta, Shasta's slow, it's usually slow this time of the year. You can catch a few nice trout, but you really got to work for them. If you hook up, you might get a nice brown, say six plus pounds, you might get a good rainbow, three to four pounds, but you're going to have to put in your time. A much better option, if you want to troll, is right next door to Shasta at Whiskey Town. There was a lot of talk about the, the kokanee being all dead in Whiskey Town because of the runoff from that fire they had up there last year. Well, guys have been hitting the lake. There's a lot of small kokanee. There's also a lot of kokanee up to 17 inches. They're easy to catch, top 20 feet of the water column, orange apexes, orange hoochies, pink hoochies. That stuff's all working. Put it behind a dodger, put some corn on the hook, and you're gonna catch a limit of fish over at Whiskey Town. Uh, moving down, more kokanee. Stampede Reservoir. Stampede's kicking out good numbers of kokanee and the occasional Big Mac up to about 11 pounds. So that's very viable if you live in the Sacramento area. Easy access and the fishing's very good over there. Um, Lake Davis, that's not too far from Stampede. That is offering outstanding rainbow trout fishing. My buddy was just up there. He got a 26 inch rainbow. I got to get up there myself. The hot ticket up there is Dick Knight spoons either in gold or copper colors so that's a big time bite at Davis um, that kind of rounds out the trout fishing up here in NorCal there's a lot of other good action the upper Sacramento is well the upper section of the lower Sacramento I should say incredible rainbow trout fishing those fish are all wild they're ranging up to like 23 inches um, fly guys are getting them gear guys are getting them so now is the time to go trout fishing absolutely um, in the Delta, the sturgeon bite continues to amaze people. It's very good. 
probably the best sturgeon fishing we've had in five or six years. Um, limits are the rule if you go out there and put in your time. The only limiting factor is, are you going to hook oversized fish or are you going to hook slot fish? Because they're all biting, row, eel, deal with the spring wind, put in your time, you're going to catch some fish. And the striper bite. Stripers, it's, it's limits all the time in a delta. Live bait drifters are doing well. Cut bait guys are doing well. You can plug them, you can jig them, you can troll. However you want to catch them, both sides are going off. The Sacramento side's great. San Joaquin side's probably a little bit better, but hey, it's limits all around. Excellent fishing. Um, saltwater action. San Francisco Bay halibut bite. It's a raging bite. The average is two fish per rod. Smaller fish are in the South Bay. If you want to limit, go south. You want to concentrate on larger fish, safe fish that will range up to 24, 25 pounds. Stick with the central bay, drift that live bait, work some of the deeper areas. You're going to encounter those larger fish. You're just not going to get the big numbers that they're getting down in the south bay. Continue to be a few stripers mixed in, the occasional white sea bass is mixed in. Um, outside the gate, the ocean salmon action is good to very good depending on the day. It's ranging from a fish per rod to limits to early limits it just depends on the day but if you get out there you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to take home a salmon you might take home a limit you might have multiple hookups who knows um, one of the top boats that i like to fish on the new easy rider captain joe and joey gelia they always put people on the fish so those are my hot bites there's a lot more fish biting than that clear lakes kicking out big catfish um, the mother load lakes are kicking out all kinds of fish. Pardee's kicking out mixed limits of kokanee and rainbows. Um, so if you got a favorite destination, grab your gear, get on the water, and you're likely going to have a good trip. Whether you want to target trout, kokanee, bass, catfish, stripers, whatever your cup of tea is, grab your gear and get out on the water. Now's the time. Fishing is great, and you can't catch them from the couch. That's the first rule of fishing. Anyway, this is Kel Kellogg. Those were my hot bites, and I will catch you again right here next week. Howdy, folks. I was surfing the web the other day, and I was on a Facebook page called Epic Trout, and I came across a picture of an absolute beastly brown trout and that got me you know gave me the itch to talk about big browns now i'm going to confess i've never caught a really huge brown my biggest brown is probably about eight pounds and i usually don't specifically target them i catch them you know incidentally when i'm out just trying to catch a trout but look at the pictures of this thing um it's a double digit fish and of course these brown trout guys are pretty secretive we don't know where it was caught other than it was caught somewhere in the california mountains and we don't know what it was caught on and we don't know the exact weight said it was a double digit fish it uh it's certifiably huge it looks like it could you know eat a small man so you know stay off those surfboards i don't know but uh, congratulations to this guy that is just a fish of a lifetime and uh, so let's talk a little bit about brown trout. I'll tell you everything I know. Um, I know some interesting facts about them, that's for sure. One, you know, for starter offers, brown trout are not native to, to the United States. They came from Europe. Um, and there seem to be two varieties, and there's always some conjecture. I don't know if they're different species or they just look different. You'll see a lot of the yellow colored browns. You see those in Tahoe and different places, like the brown you saw see in the picture here, this big brown. Um, they're, very, they're very yellow or golden colored. They've got the red dots, the black spots. They're beautiful. They're your iconic brown. Then you've got browns, they're more silver, they're more salmon looking. You see those at lakes like Shasta, stuff like that. And I don't know if they really are another species, a subspecies of browns, or that's just a product of their environment. I have no idea, but they look very different. Um, they strike the same lures, they fight the same, but they don't look the same. So don't know what that's all about, but that's interesting. Um, brown trout have the reputation for being hard to catch and scientific data absolutely backs that up. Um, a number of years ago at Lake Tahoe, back I think in the 60s, I read this and I couldn't find the report again. I read it in a book. Um, the Fish and Game Department went out and they netted fish in Tahoe. I think it was in the 60s. 
netted fish and tile, and what they determined was that there were three times as many brown trout in Tahoe as there were rainbows, based on their numbers. But when they did angler surveys, they found out that for every brown trout an angler caught, they caught five rainbows. Well, what's that tell you? There's less rainbows, but anglers catch more rainbows. That right there tells you that the rainbows are significantly easier to catch. Um, guys always ask me, you know, why do brown trout get big at this lake and get super big at that lake? And why don't rainbows get as big as brown trout? Well, first and foremost, brown trout live a lot longer than rainbows. An old rainbow trout is six or seven years old. They eat and eat and eat and they die. And that's as big as they grow um, in a lot of places. Now there's some places up in Alaska, they have access to a lot of salmon eggs and stuff like that. They do get bigger, but bottom line is, they have a short lifespan and fish grow throughout their entire life. So if you have a shorter lifespan, you're not going to get as big as a fish that has a longer lifespan, typically speaking. Your brown trout, well, they can live up to and beyond 20 years of age. So they live, you know, essentially three times as long as a rainbow. So they get a whole lot bigger. But that still doesn't explain why at some lakes they get big while at other lakes they get huge. And I can only partially explain that. Um, I asked a biologist one time, I said, why don't we see huge brown trout out of Shasta? If you don't know about Shasta, a big brown trout at Shasta is six or eight pounds, a huge brown is 10 pounds, and a ginormous brown is 12 pounds. Shasta is a huge lake. It's deep and it is full of clouds of threadfin shad. And his response was very simple. The lake doesn't have kokanee. He felt that the key ingredient for producing huge browns was having a kokanee salmon population. He said, you know, you're getting as many calories from one kokanee as you are from, you know, 10 or 12 shad. You got to burn more energy to catch 10 or 12 shad. And as a result, the browns simply don't get as large at a place like Shasta or, you know, New Maloney's where the, where the, where the primary forage base for those fish is shad. Now, I don't know if that's completely true, though, because lakes like New Maloney's, they do have kokanee. And then you've got lakes like uh, uh, Twin Lakes, okay? I don't believe there's kokanee in there, and they produce browns that are over 15 pounds. So it's still a bit of a mystery to me, but that is one theory, and it does seem to be true. If you're looking for big browns, a lake that has kokanee is a good bet. Now, there's a lot of big browns in the Sierras. They're found in almost every lake, and almost every lake produces a few big browns. The fact of the matter is, most guys don't go out and target big browns. I know I don't, but I know how those guys do it. And we're going to talk about some big brown trout tactics right after this message. Okay, let's talk about catching those big browns. One of the main reasons that I don't catch huge brown trout is I spend more time pulling stuff like this, a basic, you know, bait fish imitation that will catch, you know, small to medium sized browns and medium to large sized rainbows. That's what I spend most of my time trolling. I'm not out there trolling big giant minnow plugs like these. And that's what your brown trout hunters do. They combine big, giant plugs like these. Here's a Rapala Husky Jerk. Here's a bait from Berkeley, a kokanee pattern, you know, jointed model. Um, they spend a lot of time pulling plugs like these and they have a lot of patience and they have a lot of tactical knowledge. They learn over time the areas of the lake where those big brown trout prefer to feed. Um, and they keep presenting these types of plugs at high speed in those areas. They do a lot of manipulating of their rods, they work their rods, they give the, the plug slack, they kill it in the water, they jerk it, 
they rip it. But again, patience, patience, patience. This is like sturgeon fishing. It's about keeping your bait in the water, keeping your presentation perfect and effective and fishing with confidence because you're not gonna get a ton of strikes. Sometimes those brown trout guys do. The conditions are right, the fish are feeding, they get out there, they start pulling their plugs and they get multiple fish in a day. But most of the time, it's a waiting game. They're putting in their, they're putting in their time and they're waiting to encounter that one active fish and when they get them, they're big. They're six, eight, 10, 12 pound fish. Um, so in their view, it's worth waiting for. I don't have that much patience, so I'm just hoping to stumble on a double-digit brown one of these days. Who knows? Maybe it'll happen. But anyway, if you got your heart set on a big brown, go to a lake that has a reputation for producing big browns, preferably a lake that has kokanee, and put in your time pulling big plugs like these. You want to lube them up really well with the Procure scent of your choice. That can tip the odds in your favor. And I've also heard time and time again, low light periods, that's a great time. Stormy weather, stormier the better. That's when those browns seem to feel comfortable when they come up to feed and also work the structure. They're not like rainbows. You'll find them out in open water, but most of the time those big browns are caught on, on you know very contoured banks. Drops, rocky drops, rocky reefs, big points, stuff like that. And these guys are pounding them aggressively with big plugs like these during prime times, hour after hour after hour. Again, it's like sturgeon fishing. Put in your time, pull big plugs like these, use fluorocarbon line, use stout enough tackle to land the fish. Eventually, good things are gonna happen. Um, that's the way to do it. That's the recipe for success on big browns. Um, I'm gonna keep on pulling these XLs and having a good old time. But anyhow, get out on the water, whether your cup of tea is catching some pan-sized rainbows for the table or you wanna put on your big plugs and go hunting for hogs, that's the way you do it. Anyway, catch you next week with another tactical fishing tip right here on This Week in Fishing. This week on our Destination Spotlight, we're going to be talking about French Meadows Reservoir. It's one of my absolute favorite places to go trout fishing. It's about 36 miles northeast of the town of Forest Hill, um, and it's about nine miles from the Sierra Nevada crest. Um, the lake sits at 5,200 feet. Um, it's lined with conifers all around the shoreline. Um, the lake itself is about three miles long, about a half mile wide and uh, it has about seven miles of shoreline, something like that. Maximum depth, um, I've seen water out there that's about 100 feet deep. Most of the lake is 40 to 50 feet deep. And if you just take a casual look at the lake, there's not a lot there in terms of features. It looks like an oval shaped lake. There's a very short river arm and the other end is dominated by the dam. But if you take a closer look, particularly when the water level's down, what you'll see is, is that on, on the uh, north side of the lake, there are a lot of steep gullies that lead into the water, and those provide a bunch of underwater structure. On the south side of the lake, there's some gullies and there's some deep water, but there's big stump fields, big flats. Um, and those, uh, those areas provide just a lot of cover and produce a lot of aquatic insect uh, you know, hatches and stuff like that. The, the north side of the lake, 
Well, it's also dotted with stumps, but there's also other structural features out there. There's rock piles, reefs, rock faces, points that come out, you know, submerged points that come out and then drop right into the, the main river channel. The lake is formed on the north fork of the American River, so where the, where the points approach that river channel, there's often steep drop-offs. Now, the lake has both rainbow and brown trout in it. Um, I've had very good luck catching both species. Um, rainbows, they range up to about 18 inches. The lake is fairly heavily planted with rainbows, but a lot of those fish turn into holdovers. You could tell when you catch them. They're, they've got clean tails. Um, you can tell that they've been in the lake for a while and they're growing. Um, last year, I had my best, uh, my best little shot of rainbow trout fishing at the lake ever. I caught four trout. The smallest one was, was 16 inches. The biggest one was just short of 19 inches. Um, I caught those fish all in about a half an hour, um, trolling speedy shiners. And, and let's kind of talk about where you find a trout. I catch a lot of trout at French Meadows right out in open water over the main channel or I find them adjacent to really steep banks. Those four big rainbows I caught last August, they were sitting on a really steep bank in about 30 feet of water that, you know, the bank continued to drop down into 80 feet, and they were only maybe 100 feet off the shore. So they were 30 feet deep, about 100 feet off the shore. I could see stumps and stuff dotting that, that steep bank, and I could see the arches of suspended fish just off the bottom. Um, I trolled through there with a downrigger at 30 feet, which seemed to be the, the main level the fish were holding at, with a copper speedy shiner. It was really windy. Um, I was maintaining about three miles an hour, and uh, I caught those fish really fast, and I ended up releasing them all. So they're still in there. Um, in terms of brown trout, I've caught brown trout out in the middle of the lake, near no structure whatsoever, but most of the brown trout I've caught have been in the upper reaches of the lake, near the stumps, near the rock features. Um, at the upper end, they're submerged right now, the lake level's up. Uh, up. But there's, there's some big rock piles that when the lake level's down, they form islands. And, uh, well, you gotta be careful around them because they'll grab your downrigger balls because they come out of really deep water and they come up very abruptly. So when you go there in like September, October, you'll see them, they look like islands. Those areas hold a lot of browns. They like to lurk around those rock piles. They like to hang out around those stumps. Um, every brown I've ever kept and cleaned at French Meadows Reservoir was packed with crawfish. And I think that's a clue as to why they're hanging out around that kind of structure. I think they're looking to ambush, you know, uh, crawdads and stuff like that. And that's why they like to hang out there. Um, most of the browns I've caught at the lake have been anywhere from 14 to 20 inches long. I've caught three browns that were right at five pounds. I caught all three of those actually while bank fishing on the backside of the lake, soaking inflated worms. And that's how I fished the lake for years. I didn't start trolling the lake until about five years ago. So, you know, who knows? But that's how I caught all my big browns there. I haven't caught a really big one from the kayak yet. I got pictures a few years ago of a 12 pound brown that was caught in the lake by a guy, you know, a brown trout specialist. He was out there pulling big plugs and he got a big fish. And I've seen some epic marks in the lake, but uh, I've never caught anything bigger than about five pounds and about 19 inches on the rainbow side of things. But the fishery's prolific. There are a lot of trout in there. I've seldom gone there and got skunked. Most of the time I have enough fish for a limit. And those fish are just awesome. They're awesome eating fish. They have pink meat. Um, they put up a good fight, good stuff. It's near the Sierra Crest. Gotta watch out for wind. It can get windy there, but it's a fairly small lake. There are two launch ramps. There's never a floating dock. There's one launch ramp on the south side. That's the bigger, more popular ramp. There's a smaller ramp that I prefer to use for my kayak on the north shore towards the headwaters of the lake. Um, it's a great lake for small craft, small tin boats, um, you know, canoes, kayaks, float tubes, stuff like that. You'll feel right at home. If you're a bank angler, don't despair. I've always caught trout there off the bank. Power bait works for the rainbows, salmon eggs. But my number one choice is an inflated worm or a worm drifted under a bobber. And you can cast too. Cast masters work, cripple lures work, stuff like that works. In terms of trolling lures, um, I've caught a lot of fish there on spoons. Speedy shiners, humdingers, cast masters, stuff like that. Um, small minnow plugs, the Yozuri L minnows, small rebels, Rapalas, all that stuff works. And Arctic fox trolling flies work very well there. Um, if you just want to target rainbows, uh, Berkeley grubs work very well. 
as do, you know, the old standby, a threaded crawler behind some blades. That, that's probably the number one thing that's used there. Guys take that out there, they catch a mixed limit of rainbows and browns, take it back to camp and cook them, and they're happy. Um, let's talk about the camping there. There are several big campgrounds around the lake. They have, they're, they're fairly primitive. There's running water available. Most of them have vault toilets. Um, the surroundings are awesome. It's quiet. Even though you're only 36 miles from Forest Hill, it feels like you are in the middle of nowhere. Lots of bears there. Keep your food locked up. There are lots of bears there. Um, they're not vicious or mean, but they, they love a Hershey bar when they can get one. So keep your food locked up. Um, Beyond that, there's trails, there's motorcycle riding, there's hiking, there's biking. Biking's very popular there, so is motorcycle riding. I see a lot of people out there that ride their motorcycles out from Forest Hill. They'll grab lunch, either going or coming from the lake. Um, it's very picturesque. Um, the area burned a number of years ago. It's dominated by big granite spires, um, dark timber. It's the High Sierras. It's beautiful. If you've never been to French Meadows Reservoir, put it on your list of places to go. You're going to catch some trout. You're going to have a good time. And if you can stay overnight or over for a couple nights, you're just going to have a great experience. It's a great place to go. It's kind of off the beaten path. It, uh, it, the lake was first formed in the 60s. The campgrounds were made just after that. And uh, for locals here in the Forest Hill area, it's one of the places we really like to go. But uh, I would encourage you to go there no matter where you're coming from. You're going to have a good time. You're going to catch some trout. And uh, you're going to leave with a smile on your face. Anyway, that's our destination for this week. French Meadows Reservoir in the Tahoe National Forest. Be there or be square. You'll have some fun.